clothed in our right mind. Yes, yes. As the preacher just said, I didn't put my shoes on my feet. Amen. You did. Yes, but as I say today, as the scripture read, and as the people said, I don't know what you come to do, yes, but I come to witness you. Amen. Amen. I come to witness you. Giving honor to our founder, to his mother Rogers, amen. Looking over the blessings, cherishing in the words of what was set forth. That is Founders Day, Lord. We know what Founders Day means. God bless each and every one of you that hears my voice. And may we live according to the spirit in your name, amen. You know what I say, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones who did. Millions didn't make it, but you were one of the ones who did. Millions didn't make it, we were the one, one of the ones who did because of that. What did your pain pray sound like? Day celebration. Praise the Lord, saints. Psalms 122 and 1 through 2 says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will stand within the gates, O Jerusalem. I am grateful for the privilege to stand before you with our welcome and acknowledgments of our special guests, visitors, and friends. On this, one of my daddy's words, auspicious occasion and special day in Greater New Bible Way. 45 years of successful climbing. They said we would not make it, but we kept climbing through prayer and praise and the word of God. Look where the Lord has brought us from, Greater New Bible Way family and friends. Our church motto is, a church where God is really, really real. A church where love flows because God controls. And then our pastor has a 2022 theme. It says, expect God to renew in 2022. <laughs> to our special guests and friends, we see, feel so very blessed to have you present with your beautiful smiling faces here today because this service would not be complete without you. I would like to first acknowledge, amen, the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. I would like to acknowledge our pastor, Dennis J. Rogers Sr. and our first lady, Dora Rogers. Amen. We're, we are acknowledging, amen, the officers and members of Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. Let's appreciate them. Amen. We are acknowledging our founding mother and first lady emeriti, Mother Leona Pazell Lewis Rogers. We are acknowledging our honorable speaker, the Bishop Charles Rogers. Bishop Emeritus of the Impact Fellowship. Let's praise God. Acknowledging Mother Gloria Rogers, his wife. Praise God for Brother Zach Rogers, their grandson who came along with them. Amen. Any other special guests and friends, if you are here, please stand. If you are a visitor, please stand. Well, look at the... God bless you, sister. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Well, by the way, we are mainly all family. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> to God be the glory. Pastor to Bishop Rogers, to First Lady Dora Rogers, and to Mother Leona Rogers, to all the members, saints, and friends, I do count an honor and blessing to be here. And today, on the dangerous highways that we travel, we didn't see an accident, no fatalities, but I thank God we were not one of those today. I thank God for bringing us and bringing us safely here. And I don't really have a response to that welcome because I knew I was welcome when I first walked in this door. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. And the just got me all fired up. I'm like Elder up here saying,
said that he's already here. I'm here in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for the invitation. I love you all, and I love you, love you, love you. You all continue to pray for us, and we pray for you that the Lord would do something great and marvelous in this place today. Praise you. Because the Bible said, how can two walk together? Unless they agree. Amen. You got to have the right one, baby. Amen. And I said that the saying is, amen. The person that's coming to read the church history, amen, happened to be my wife. Hey, I said, look at She can't wait to go. Amen. 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 My wife is coming now, amen, to read, amen, amen, our church history. Amen. God bless you, honey. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. First, giving the honor to God, who is the head of my life. Yes, to our pastor, Dennis J. Rogers, Sr., Amen. and our lovely first lady, Dora Rogers. Amen. To our emeritus, Amen. Mother Leona Rogers, Amen. who stood by her husband through prayer and fasting. Amen. This great visionary man, superintendent, and Pastor Rochester Rogers, to our special guest, Bishop Charles Rogers and Lady Rogers, and certainly to my husband, Elder Franklin Vanderbilt Sr., and to all of God's people. As my husband said earlier, we are here to celebrate 45 years of ministry here at the Great Bible. Church of God in Christ, 22nd and Franklin Street, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Superintendent Rochester Rogers, Sr., founder. Church history. On February 6, 1977, Superintendent Rochester Rogers, Sr., and Mother Leona Rogers officially founded the Bible Way Church on Love. The love as recorded in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, yeah. that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It was with this same kind of sacrificial act of love that Superintendent and Mother Rogers established and led the Bible Way Church. It was then that they gave the church its motto, a church where love flows because God controls. A church where God is really real. Since the establishment of this great church, many souls have confessed with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believed in their hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead and are now saved by his blood. In other words, our founder said, there is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he'll do the same for you. In the month of April 1977, the newly organized Bowerway family purchased a small but beautiful church at 502 West 18th Street, North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tremendous progress was made during the stay at this church. Many new members found hope, a new outlook on life, and began making positive contributions to our church and community. The love of the Bible Way Church family became the hallmark of its reputation and spread throughout the local community, city, and state civic leadership, and to churches of all denominations. The Almighty God had wrought great lessons for the Bible Way family. After years of dedication and many prophecies, our dreams became reality. And the Lord blessed us to purchase a new sanctuary located directly in front of our current location across West 18th Street. Yeah. Yeah. We were so excited. 
For we knew God had answered the prayers of the righteous. We praise and worship God to the utmost in that beautiful sanctuary while maintaining humble hearts and souls. However, on September 9th, 1991, the supposed enemy robbed and burned this beautiful edifice. But the Lord, but the Lord, who sent a word of promise to Pastor Rogers as the fire burned. We immediately began worshiping at the Shirley College Auditorium. And though we cried together as a church family, we never lost hope and maintained a spirit of rejoicing. We knew that God was bottling up all our tears in order to pour out a mighty blessing. Yeah. By continuing to keep the faith, in just a few months, God moved in a supernatural way. Yeah. Through the favor of God, we moved into our present complex which became known as the Miracle on 22nd Street. Again, we are humble and grateful for the faithfulness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God has blessed us with increase of many new souls, spiritual growth, and stability. We praise God for speaking through our founding First Lady, Mother Leona Rogers, for naming our first church Bible Way. Our founding pastor, Superintendent Rochester Rogers, who named our next home across the street New Bible Way. And finally, the Lord spoke through Elder Ronald Kimbrew to name this present complex Greater New Bible Way Church of God. On June 16, 2012, our beloved founder and pastor, Superintendent Rochester Rogers, moved from labor to reward, from earth to glory. We salute our beloved founder, pastor, and humanitarian, Superintendent Rochester Rogers, Sr. For the foundation you laid for the lifetime of exemplary leadership and character you possess, and, and your unyielding faith on the job, well done. We also salute our First Lady Emeritus, Mother Leona Rogers, who worked continuously for poise and grace for 35 years by her husband's child, and continues to this day on the job, well done. Finally, to his lovely sons and daughter, for continuing the work began by your parents, God bless you. Special recognition to the eldest son and current pastor of the Greater New Bible Way Church, Elder Dennis Rodney Sr. First Lady Dora Rogers, preparing yeah. the torch and legacy that lives on. May the Lord forever bless and keep great new by great church of God in Christ. Amen. To God be the glory. Yeah. Even so, right. come Lord Jesus. Yeah. Could we all stand, yeah. thank God, and give, give our founders a roundabout, a roundabout.
for our founder, the late Superintendent Rochester Rogers Sr. and his lovely wife who is still a living vessel among us today. Amen. Um, and to those who have served uh, before and after um, in a great capacity under Superintendent Rochester Rogers and with our now pastor, his son, Pastor Dennis J. Rogers Sr. The following members will always be in our hearts, and we are so thankful for their servitude and groundwork in paving the way for us today. And the list reads as such. Mother Charlene Boyd, Deacon Waverly Clark, Mother Velma Jean Dunnick, Mother Dorothy Edwards, Mother Irma, Irma Gary, Mother Lucilla Gillum, Deacon Eddie Hunter, Sister Irma Jackson, Sister Natalie Johnson, Mother Cersei King, Mother Josephine Lott, Mother Rosie Mack, Elder Jimmy Marshall, Mother Bernice Miller, Elder Lenny Miller, Mother Mary Ross, Brother Walter Sims, Mother Ruth Vernon, Mother Lily Young, Mother Ferry Gupton, Mother Betty Willis, Mother Geraldine Connors, Deacon Ezra Rogers, Brother Ray Walker, Mother Beatrice Allen, Mother Elosi Rogers, Superintendent Wesley Rogers, Brother Carlos Davis, Brother John Jenkins, Mother Dorothy Jackson, Brother John Vernon, Mother Jean Dunnan, Mother Betty Moore, Mother Leela Smith, Mother Icy Lee Walker, Brother James Williams, Sister Charlotte Sims, Sister Brenda Anderson, Elder Jerry Parker, Brother Ernest Whitehead, Mother Bernice Miller, Mother Margot Tenner, Mother Gussie Williams, Brother Anthony Martin, Sister Jean Smith Sanders, Sister Irma Johnson, and Mother Vel and Mother Velma Laverne Rogers, who just recently passed. She's not on your list um, at the time of printing the, the programs. Uh, she had not gone on to be with the Lord, so we want to definitely make sure that we acknowledge Mother Velma Laverne Rogers. And lastly, Superintendent Rochester Rogers. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We shall rejoice and be glad. If you are here today and you're glad in it, come on, let's put those sanctified hands together one more time. Come on, if you know that you know that you know that you know that God has been good to all of us, even in the midst of the pandemic. Come on, let's celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the great I Am. Come on, he's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our Jehovah's Seeker new. He is the El El Young. Come on, if you know that he is God, come on, thank him one more time. Ah. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because here, amen, is where we find our safety. Here is where we get our healing. Here is where salvation is. Here is where you can receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout Holy Ghost. Ah, I just want to get you ready for this next phase of service. 
that we're getting ready to go into. Somebody ought to shout glory in this house. Ah, that would be good, amen, if you were lifting me up. Come on, let's do it one more time. Amen for the sun.
Board of Trustee members. I want you to recognize these people. These people, when the going got tough and the tough was going, they said, Pastor, we are with you 100%. We are behind you. We are beside you. We are in front of you. Whatever needs to be done, we're going to see to this church remaining. Amen. And I'm saluting, amen, these. Will y'all help me salute the Board of Trustees of the Great Revival Way Church of God? Come on, you all can do better than that. These men and women, amen, will make sacrifices that you are even not aware of in their time, in their effort, amen, in their giving, amen. So I would be remiss if I didn't thank God for them, amen, on today, amen, and to the entire Greater New Bible Way Church membership, God bless you on today. Thank God for you, amen, amen, and all the many sacrifices that you make, amen, for us to continue to do ministry, amen, amen on the scale in which we are doing it. Amen. And you know what? There are some people, amen, that are not in the sanctuary today that are supportive of this ministry, that have joined in this ministry. By the way, can we thank God for the worldwide watchers? Come on, let's celebrate the worldwide watchers, amen, that support us, amen, from far and near. Amen. We even got, amen, a special recognition from London, England. Hallelujah. Don't you know that made my heart feel glad, filled with joy? Amen. All the way from London, England. Amen. Not just by way of gift, amen, but an email of how they appreciate the work that is going forward from the little old church in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Bless you, God bless you. Amen. Thank God for my mother. Thank God for my mother. We were there. Amen. Amen. We could put it all in the church history. Amen. About, amen, the words that may have been tossed. Amen. And said about, amen, when dad, amen, sat down with her and said what he was going to do with those finances. Amen. Am I in the house today? Amen. Those finances that were set aside for retirement. Amen. But he dipped into that and said, the Lord said, amen, it's time to birth the ministry. Amen. I know mother. Amen. Had a few words to say. Amen. Can I be lightly today? <laughs> amen. Because not only was he messing with his retirement, he was messing with her retirement. Amen. And he was messing with a, a whole lot of things then. But when the Lord gives you something, when it is truly the Lord, amen, you don't have to worry about a thing. God will provide. I'll say that again. God will provide. And I want to let you know, ever since that day, my mother and my father have not had to beg for bread. Because God has opened up many doors and many windows. As a matter of fact, the family have not had to beg for bread. And I thank them for teaching us to be givers. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because that allowed the blessings to continue to flow over on us. We'll give us a tithe and give us an offering. Amen. I thank God for those teachings that begin at home. God bless you. Thank God for the first lady that is standing now. My own wife, First Lady Dora Ann Rogers. Amen. That he united with me, amen, to continue to carry the torch. Amen. That we are still where we are today. God bless you. God bless you. 
Amen. And since I've been standing, amen, we've had some friends to come, amen, and join us. And I'm so grateful, so honored, amen, amen, that, amen, the superintendent, amen, of this great district, the fellowship district, we all have to thank God, amen, for the superintendent, Robert Robinson. Come on, thank God for our superintendent, great new by the way. Amen, my friend, my brother, my phone call partner, amen, that encourages me, amen, daily, amen, but mostly on Sunday. We're right there, amen. You can do this thing, amen. Will y'all help me welcome, amen, Superintendent Arthur Lee Terry. Amen. These are great pastors, amen. They left their ministry, amen, to be with us on today, amen, and we thank God for them also. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen, my friend and brother. Amen. Elder Jose Malone. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Oh, my God. The assisting pastor of the greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. You all know what he means to me, Bible Way. Come on, thank God for the evangelist in his own right. Assistant pastor, the El evangelist, David White. Amen. God bless him. God bless him. Y'all heard. Amen. Elder Vanderbilt. Amen. Thank God. Elder Quick. Amen. Amen. Minister. Amen. Elder Joe Bird. Amen. God bless. Amen. Newly added minister, Minister Jackson. Amen. God bless you, Minister Barnes. Amen. Amen. I just thank God for the house today. I'm grateful for the house today. Amen. Yes, sir. My own blood brother. The elder Daniels. Who Creek. Rogers. Come on. That's my brother, you all. I'm grateful for him, too. I'm grateful for him. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for the ushers. Thank God for the ushers. Thank God for the prayer warriors, the mothers, the missionaries, the deacons, the department heads of this ministry. I'm just taking my time, amen, to let y'all know I'm grateful today. I'm grateful, truly grateful today. We are honored today, Greater New Bible Way saints and friends, to have this great man of God great leader, great founder in his own right, amen, great organizer, amen. He's done so many great and wonderful things for the church at large. I picked up the phone and I called his son because I didn't know, amen, how he was feeling, amen. I understand, amen, amen. He's getting on up in age, amen, and if you're all right, amen, uncle, that I tell your age, is that all right? Amen. 80 years young. 80 years young. And you know what? He's still preaching just about every Sunday somewhere, from what I understand. Amen. So when, when my cousin told me, he said, yes, sir, cuz. You better give him a call because he'll be right there. And I called him, amen. And I said, Uncle, amen, we would love for you to come to North Little Rock. And he said, Son, I'd be honored. Amen. And I've been excited ever since that day, amen, that he accepted the invitation. Listen, amen. By blood, he's my cousin. But by respect, we call him uncle because he and my father amen he tells a story they were double first cousins but they were almost like brothers now he's been preaching amen for a mighty long time ever since he was a little boy amen I think he was instrumental in amen and my father being saved amen at an early age from what I understand uncle amen you've been preaching the gospel Five, six, seven. I started traveling as a youth evangelist at 15. 
at 15 years old. I thought it was earlier than 15 that you've been preaching. Four years old. I thought I heard somebody say four or five years old. This man has had a mic in his mouth and been declaring to God. Come on, thank God for that. Today. Let's celebrate God. So happy for his wife. If you want to know somebody that's full of hospitality, loving, sweet, and is a jewel, amen, not only to the body of Christ, but to the Rogers family at large, we all help me celebrate, amen, Lady Gloria Rogers today. This woman, amen, is part of the glue to the family, to the Rogers family. She never forgets a birthday, an anniversary. Amen. Am I right, First Lady? Since you have come into the family, have she forgot your birthday? Amen. That is the kind of woman, amen, Aunt Gloria, amen, is, amen. So we thank God for her, amen. All the way from Memphis, Tennessee, we're so grateful, amen, to have the Bishop Charles Rogers, whom we're getting ready to hear from. I want you to get ready. I want you to get ready because we're getting ready to hear a word from the Lord today. Amen. He is no stranger to the church. His father helped build Mason Temple. His father was right there with our headquarters, our national headquarters. Amen. He was one of the carpenters, amen, that were right there. Amen. Help build, amen, our Legacy, amen, in Memphis, Tennessee. Come on, let's thank God for them. The next voice that you would hear coming to this pulpit would be none other than the Bishop Charles Rogers. Amen. Father, I thank you once again for the privilege of ministering here at Greater New Bible Way. Thank you for this pastor, this shepherd of the flock. Thank you for his wife and mother and the wonderful members of this church. Thank you for salvation by grace. Yeah. And thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now let your word go forth in the power of the Holy Ghost as we minister today. Touch the hearing of the hearers that we may come to spiritual maturity We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and all the people say, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. I do honor Pastor Dennis Rogers and his wife, First Lady Rogers, and then First Lady Rogers Emeritus. Uh, I do honor Mother Rogers, my wife of 50 years. We celebrated 50 years this past November. And, uh, I honor the superintendents, pastors, elders, ministers, the assistant pastor of this church. And uh, I, I, I believe this is the superintendent Robinson that I've been knowing a long time since he lived in Cleveland, Ohio. I was playing revival for 
the late Bishop Perry many, many years ago. And he was living there then. After he moved to Arkansas, I came and conducted revival for him in Dumas. And then I came here to Little Rock when he planted a church eight years ago and conducted one of the first, if not the first, revive, the first revival at that church. So I've known Superintendent Robinson a long time. Longer than he probably cares to remember. Yeah. Elder Thaddeus Rogers over there. I appreciate uh, how you have labored with your brother. And, uh, and how you were here with your father. You've been right here for many years. And I respect that and appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate uh, Mother Rogers, how she has labored with her husband and now her son for all of these years. I don't know if you know it or not, but I conducted the first revival in this church. I came here, Pastor Rochester Rogers and I were double first cousins. Our fathers were brothers and our mothers were sisters. Both our fathers were pastors and uh, superintendents and then my father became a bishop. Amen. And uh, so those, uh, we were like brothers more so than cousins. And uh, he called me. I had started pastoring the church that the late Bishop McEwen pastored in Covington, just north of Memphis. And he called me and told me that it was in his heart to plant a church here in North Little Rock. And he had a lot of questions for me regarding the best way to go about doing it. And I, uh, I drove over here more than once. And we looked at the proper 10, all of that, and he finally decided that was where he wanted to start on 18th Street. And uh, I conducted revival there, and then you bought another nice brick church right across the street. I came and preached there. We brought a bus. And then that church burned and he said to me, he said, I can't even explain to you how I felt to stand there and see that church burn. And nothing I could do about it. And but God. where he wants yeah. us to be. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's inconvenient. Yeah. And uh, so I appreciate my grandson driving us over. I still drive all over the country. And uh, but he uh, he, he, he volunteered, they call themselves, telling me something. And, uh, and uh, he volunteered to 
drive us over here. So he he drove us, looking out for us. And uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> we came over yesterday, and uh, we we spent the uh, the night uh, here last night. And I, I, I thought that was just a little better than having to move out so early and drive here this morning. But uh, I still drive, Rob, I'm, I'm going to slow it down, but I still drive all over the country. I preached for Bishop Macklin up in Hayward, California. And we drove that back, and you know, that's a long way from Memphis. That's over 4,000 miles, about, about 4,400 miles. But we stopped before dark every day, you know, and uh, take our time like that. I just don't like, I'm being honest with you, I have flown part way around the world. I preached in Germany, three conducted crusades, three times in Germany. I preached in Central America, Belize, and uh, I, I've, I've flown to Israel, Italy, France. Uh, uh, just, I've been a whole lot of places. I've flown. I'm not afraid to fly, but I do not like to fly. I'm an earthly. And I like the ground. Uh, 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 I don't understand all those folks on that great big heavy airplane. Nothing under me but air. So uh, I just do not like to fly. I started flying when I was 18, and I don't like it any better today. So I only fly when I don't have time to go any other way. So that's why I keep a good near new car all the time. And because uh, I just may get in it tomorrow and we take off to New York or uh, wherever, you know, we just take off. And the children be fussing and going on about it. You know, I drove to Alaska. Yeah, yeah, drove to Alaska. So, uh, uh, and and uh, we, we were going to drive all the way. But the kids, I mean, they carried on about it. So we flew to Spokane. That's halfway. And I preached in Spokane for a son in the ministry out in Spokane, Washington. And then we, we drove the other 2,500 miles to Anchorage, Alaska. So uh, 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 I, I can still drive Zach, my grandson, all that. <laughs> and my insurance company calls me a good driver. Yeah. Never had a, a, a serious accident where I was in fault. And, uh, so uh, I'm doing pretty good for 80 years old. I do two or three miles on the exercise five or six days a week. I do stretching exercises, and uh, so, uh, and 80 years old, I'm thankful. God bless you, missionary out there, missionary June Joseph. Uh, Joshua, I won't be long. Joshua chapter 1. Uh, all right, all right. 
verse 1 and verse 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. So, well, I'll read verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place this is to you, Pastor Dennis Rogers, at this congregation that the sole of your foot shall tread upon yes, sir. Yes, sir. that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses verse 9 have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid be the, neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I want to talk about the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. Bless you, Elder Quick. I knew him when he was a boy. I did revival for his father when he was a boy. I was asking about his other brothers and sisters a while ago. So we've just been around here a while. Bishop some, some, some of you may not know, but the former presiding bishop was born here. Amen. All right. All right. And stayed here until he was about eight years old. And when his father took a church in San Diego, California, and uh, his father pastored that church, I think it's Calvary. Calvary. I preached that revival. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then my folks came out of Arkansas. I've never lived in Arkansas. I was born in Memphis. But my people came out of Arkansas. My father and his brothers. And then my grandfather pastored the church in Blytheville. What's the name of that uh, name of the church in Blytheville there that Elder Corns pastor. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it was one of the most outstanding churches in Arkansas at that time. My grandfather pastored that church and my grandfather also pastored 15th Street in West Memphis and my uncle, Pastor Rochester Rogers' father, pastored that church also, 15th Street in West Memphis, and then he built the church and pastored it in Brinkley. And he also pastored in Newport. And uh, so, uh, 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 Arkansas knows us already. And, and uh, so, uh, the faithfulness, faithfulness. faithfulness of God yeah. near my temple in Blytheville. Yeah, yeah, near my temple. I, I preached there once. Joshua was chosen by God with Moses being in full agreement yes, sir. to complete the work of leading 
Israel into the promised land. Yes, Pastor Dennis Rogers was apparently chosen by God with his father in full agreement yes. to lead Greater New Bible Way forward. God had made a promise to Abraham mm -hmm. over 400 years earlier Amen. that his descendants would inherit land which he had lived. Abraham's grandson Jacob went to Egypt with his family. There were only about 70 of them initially, including Joseph and his family. However, God's blessings were upon them and they multiplied greatly. The Egyptians became a friend of them and soon enslaved them, but they kept multiplying. The taskmasters made their work hard. They cried out to God, but the promise of God seemed far away. Finally, God sent them a deliverer. His name was Moses. Who, under the hand of God, brought them out of Egypt. Moses was God's man. He brought to the Israelites the laws of God. But even Moses became irritated with God's people. They seem to constantly walk in unbelief and disobedience. They even rebelled against Moses to the point of at one time desiring to stone him and go back to Egypt. They even spoke of the garlic and onions that they had to eat in Egypt. They even reached the edge of the promised land. But they gave away to unbelief and spent 40 years wandering around in the wilderness when they could have made the journey in less than 30 days. Thank God that two men, Joshua and Caleb, stood on the promise of God and said in Numbers 13 and 30, Let's go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And although they spent 40 years waiting on the promise, they knew that the promise of God are yea and amen. And they knew the faithfulness of God. They knew that God could always be counted on. A great hymn of the Christian church, I won't be long, is great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness morning by morning. New mercies I see. All I have needed. 
thy hand has provided. Praise thy faithfulness. I won't need you yet now. Lord unto me. The hymn was written by Thomas Chisholm who wrote this out of gratefulness for God's provisions. 75 years old, he said, my income has not been large at any time due to impaired health in the earlier years which has followed me until now. And he said, although I must not fail to record here the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant keeping God and that he has given me many wonderful displays of his providing care for which I feel with astonishing gratefulness. And then he said, God is faithful to his promise. Now a promise is a declaration uh, 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 that, that one will do or uh, refrain from doing that which is specified. And the word promise comes from a Latin word that means to set forth. God sets forth what he'll do. Genesis 17 and 8, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I'll be their God and although 400 years pass listen God doesn't live in time he lives there already in eternity so time doesn't mean very much to God in the sense I'm talking about today, 400 years didn't mean that much to, to God as far as time is concerned. If God said 30 years may pass, 40 or 50 years your foot on it. You can count on it. So, although 400 years had passed, the promise of God was still sure. And after Moses died, God restated the promise he made to Abraham 400 years earlier. God just thought he'd say it again. And like Israel, we too are on a journey to receive the fullness of God's inheritance. This journey has had and will have ups and downs. But God will see us through. God didn't promise us smooth sailing but he did promise us a safe landing I just don't believe uh, he's brought me this far to leave me now I don't believe that God assured Joshua twice that he'd be with him. He said, uh, I won't leave you. 
and I won't forsake you. And uh, uh, there are two words in the Hebrew that I invite you to look at and then I'm through. And one of those words is rofa, which means to be feeble, slack, to relax, or to abandon. And the word is translated fail. And I'm not a God who will fail you. on you. You are the apple of my eye. And you are the center of my attention. And then the second word is called Ozam. It means to leave, to loose, to forsake, uh, to neglect. God told me to tell you, I won't leave you, and I won't forsake you. And numbers in the Bible have meaning. And the number 45, and you have been in existence for 45 years. That number is a symbol of totality. Oh! And it's a number related to God's creative ability. And since he finished the creation of the material universe on the fourth day. And then the number five represents the mercy and the grace and the favor of God. Do you not know our uh, elder Dennis Rogers? Uh, your name means more than you think it means. And the name Dennis means church father. God has brought you from point A to point B. And I, I just don't believe he brought you this far to leave you now. And I'm climbing high mountains every day trying to get home. And I'm going to tell you a story and then I'm going to leave you. Uh, there were some mountain climbers in California. And there were uh, two or three sets of mountain climbers. And uh, it got cloudy as they climbed higher. And they couldn't each other very well. And sometimes it gets a little rough even in the church. We don't always see each other as we ought to see. And that first set got up to the top of the mountain. Then the second set got there. And the first set asked the second set, said, what about the third set of climbers? And he 
said, well, it's real cloudy, real foggy, and we couldn't see him well. But the last time we saw them, they were still climbing. because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our service.